Hello, and welcome to another version of For the Love of Animals. Today, we're going to talk about Home Alone. I'm Darlene Pickford. And I'm Greg Bauer. And we'd like to tell our viewers of some upcoming shows that they'll need to mark their uh, uh, calendars for. Uh, one will be on the Boy Scouts and some of the merit badges and work that they do with animals. And we have another one on wildlife restoration, which, uh, re rehabilitation, I'm sorry. And I think our viewers will find that very, very interesting. But Darlene, you mentioned Home Alone. What in heaven's name is this about today? Well, you know, Greg, a l most everybody works and has to leave their pets Mm -hmm. Home alone. Okay. Many times you go on a weekend trip, your animals are left home alone. Okay. And then sometimes you might have to go on a long trip, and maybe unfortunately there's a medical hospital stay or something, okay. and your animals are home alone. Okay. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Well, that, that sounds great. It, it's, it's not like the movie, you know, no. where the boy stayed at home and all these No, but this is happened. just as much fun today, okay? <laughs> okay. Would you well, introduce our guest, I'll be Greg. happy to. We have with us today Sharon Oliphant. And uh, Sharon, uh, we're real pleased that you took time out from your busy schedule today to come down and, and give us some tips on what you can do when our, your pets are home alone. But so. we'll first start, Sharon, now. You, uh, tell us about your fur family. Well, that could take a while. That's all right. <laughs> okay. Uh, I have Yorkie and Maltese mix. Um, the mother, Eleanor, uh -huh. and she has two pups, uh, Oliver and Millicent. And actually, Eleanor is 16 years old. Oh. And her two pups are actually 13 years old now. Oh, my word. Their birthday will be Mother's Day, of course. Well, okay. they have been had good care. Yes, they have. And they... Um, they are actually incorporated in with all of my other pets. Okay. So we have lots of pets. And then Murphy Brown is like uh, since 1989, uh, she's been around. So she's getting on up there. I haven't even counted cat how old she is. She's a, she's a cat. Oh, what kind of cat? And she's like a tiger gray cat. Okay. And then we have um, lots of cats. And, and actually, there's nine more. And they've come up to the house and invited themselves in. And then, uh, of course, with my service that I have, uh, I have accumulated pets from uh, clients who have either had to move out of town or have passed away. Mm -hmm. Okay. So right, Now, you talk about clients. You are the owner and operator of Pampered Pets here yes. in Paducah, right? How did you get into this um, animal care business? Well, actually, um, I was a teacher. Okay. And mm -hmm. I had weekends and summers and all off. And I also um, left my dogs alone a right. lot when I would be doing uh, the cheerleading sponsor thing. Oh, yes, the after school activities. And, yes, and so I decided that uh, maybe other people would like their pets taken care of when uh -huh. they had things to do. And also, I'm a traveler. Okay. So that kind of got me thinking way back uh, years ago, in about 1989, I decided to start my service. Okay. Oh, wonderful. And I actually started it by getting a telephone number okay. uh, that would spell pets. And in those days, nobody spelled anything uh. out. <laughs> so everybody kind of laughed at me when I first started. Uh-huh. Okay. Well, so before we leave today, we'll tell the viewers how they can contact with you. Okay. You contact with you. Okay, well, let's get started. All right, let's suppose I have a cat or a dog and I work during the day like nine to five. Okay. Help me with some guidelines. What can I do or not do to help to have a healthy, happy animal even though I have to leave him or her home alone? Okay. Help there, us out. There are different things I would suggest okay. depending on if it's a cat All or right. if it's a dog. Now, for cats, that's a lot easier. Okay. Inside cats, of course, um, if you're just gone for the day, just make sure you leave water. Always have water out, okay. water supply, and um, dry food is always okay. good, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, the kitty box where they can get to it. Absolutely. In the house. And not next to the no, water and the no, food. And not, don't, don't <laughs> put them all together. Right. And then, uh, of course, outside cats. You know, not going to have to worry because you're going to be back home in time to take care of them. Mm -hmm. Okay, then for the dogs, if they are uh, small dogs, I'm not a real big fan of crates. Mm -hmm. So okay. I suggest baby gates and a room like a, a kitchen or a, a bathroom or whatever with a 
linoleum floor or a easy maintenance floor. Okay. And uh, safe, you know, doggy proof the room. Okay. And leave water supply and a little bit of treats or dry food or something for the day. Uh -huh. Okay. And this is, this is not for long periods of time, like you said, just while you're gone to work. Okay. Now, if it's a destructive dog or um, in those cases, then we have to have help. That wouldn't work for that. Okay. Okay. So some kind of a cage might have to be done for yes, something. Yes, you like might that. need the crate for those. That's mm -hmm. that's what I call uh, training purposes, and we'll have to get the crate back out. Yeah. Okay. okay. How about an outside dog? Okay, an outside dog will need uh, again a water supply, a safe area, whether it be a fenced-in area with a secure gate, mm -hmm. or whether it would be um, the invisible fence. Check the battery. Oh, okay. This is something that does happen in when I do in-home pet care, as I call it. Okay. Uh, that does happen on occasions. We'll uh, have those little problems to occur if you're not checking your battery regularly. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you right. want to make sure the collar's secure and check that uh, okay. for the outside dogs. And you know, it's summertime or it's too cold or it's too hot. Uh, please don't leave them in a hot garage or out in the cold. Yep. And I'm not a big fan of chains. Okay, okay. you mean um, to, to, to chain chaining them, them up? I don't like chaining dogs, and I don't like crating pets. <laughs> so I just just wanted to say that. It, it, okay. <laughs> if we can avoid those at all possible. Those are my avoids, I guess. Um, just a, a quick follow up on this. I've always heard that, like with cats, for example, that if you can have two cats, that one will keep the other company, and uh, uh, that it might help. You know, the one cat. Uh, you know, tolerate the situation, if you will. If, what, yeah, what about right. that? What do you think? I think that's an excellent idea. <laughs> that's excellent for everyone because uh, as far as uh, going in to take care of the animals, uh, one more is no more trouble. Actually, it's kind of like children. <laughs> What's one more? <laughs> I come from a large family. <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, those are some awfully good thoughts, and uh, I think we now need to take a break, and um, we have a happy tale coming up. Okay. And uh, this happy tale happens to be about a cat named Sammy, and um, he has just won the hearts over of the people that he adopted by showing <laughs> up at the front door. So let's give a listen. Hi, my name is Sammy, and I think I'm about one and a half years old. I don't remember much about my early life, and that's probably just as well. One day I was wandering around and came upon this nice looking house. Hmm, maybe this is a possible home, I thought. So, I scratched on the door and this nice lady named Bobby answered. When she opened the door, I walked in and saw this nice tall man named Gary. Well, I figured out real quick that he was the one that I had to win over so that I could stay. Well, I stood in front of him and gave him that look, you know that look, and he agreed reluctantly to let me come in. They gave me a can of cat food, and I ate all of it because I was starving. I then went out and caught a mouse so they could see I was serious, and I could pull my own weight. It didn't take long for me to see that I was welcome. And they had this really neat house, and there was another older cat named Callie there. She was really not sure about me, so I decided I'd aggravate her. This was lots of fun. Well, and I also had a problem with my eye, and they took me to the vet. They gave me some medicine, made me feel a lot better. Soon, I had a place at their table. And you know what? My favorite foods are yogurt and toast. Even Callie began to accept me. Now, I'm a happy member of their household. Thank you, Bobby and Gary, for my happy forever home. Meow. Welcome back. We hope that you enjoyed that uh, little tale about uh, Sammy. Uh, Wicket did, although he looks like he's asleep right now, <laughs> but uh, he, he just takes, uh, takes it easy. Just, uh, just let, me, let me be. I'm in your lap. I'm happy. Okay. And uh, we'd like to thank Bobby and Gary Gray for that uh, wonderful happy tale. And, uh, I just got to interject something. Yes. When I see these two people, they rush up and their eyes, uh, Bobby and Gary's <laughs> eyes, light up as they tell me the newest thing about Sammy. 
<laughs> so to each of you out there who hasn't found the affection of a cat, just wait. One will come on your doorstep and bring you more joy than you ever realized. <laughs> yes. And that's what Sammy has done for the Gray and, family. And we so. can attest to that because about half of our cats have come to the front door with us also. Oh, absolutely so. so. <laughs> well, we, let's return to our discussion about Home Alone with Sharon Oliphant. And uh, Sharon, we kind of covered what to do during the day, but let's suppose that we're uh, going to be gone, say, for a weekend, two or three days, not a long period of time. What are some things that we might uh, do either the same way or a little differently from what you talked about in the first segment? When we leave our animals home alone for the weekend. Okay, I was just speaking uh, this morning with uh, someone and uh, we were discussing that. Uh -huh. And uh, you, you have to be sure if you have uh, any pet on medication. Oh, okay. Now that might change things a little bit. Uh, the number of times that you're going to have to, uh, uh, you might have to have someone to come in. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I'm not sure for a weekend. Now with a cat, you can pretty much set things up. Uh, say you're gone, are we talking about like say Friday? Friday and Sunday? I'm back late Sunday, right. Yeah. With a cat, you probably could set everything up and maybe have someone to come in and give the medication. Okay. Uh, you know, have the kitty litter. I would suggest kid extra boxes. Absolutely. And extra water supplies because they can spill their water bowls uh, in their, during their playtime. I even had a cat one time to throw up in the water bowl. Thank I, goodness mm -hmm. I had two separate, I set up an extra water bowl for them. Yes. So always better to have more than one. Of course I had gone. someone to check on mine every day. <laughs> right. So, but that's right. <laughs> and and this is just if you're you know, if you're doing the self kind of thing. Right. But if you're having a pet setter, of course, uh, one visit a day is usually good for um, a cat. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now a dog a dog's gonna need someone. <laughs> Let's face it, you're gonna have to call in help. Right. For a dog. Yeah. You know, so Wicket basically has to be taken out three times a day. So his care, home alone, mm -hmm. he can't be left, quote, home alone. And, so, and right. one, of, one of the other things that we found also, it, it's never happened to us, but potentially could, is that if you have their food or their litter box or something in a room, be sure that you prop something against that door so that they can't automatically close it and become trapped in there. Right. Uh, either from their, away from their food and litter box or in there with their food and litter box. We had this to happen one time the cats accidentally got in a room and closed the door and mm -hmm. they had to stay there the whole weekend. Now that had happened a whole week and no one had attended to them, that wouldn't have been very helpful for, no. for the cat. So. No, that's, that's why you need daily, daily okay. care for and, your pets. And I guess probably a member of a family, of your family or uh, even a neighbor that you trust. Yes. And uh, would be good for uh, helping out on weekends. And so people don't need to think about uh, or worry about the problem of leaving for the weekend. They just need to be sure that their pets are, are taken care of. Any additional guidelines in communicating this to your friend or your neighbor? You know, setting up the communication, you know, other, oh, just come by and feed my cat. I mean. Well, this all needs to be planned out. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, and actually, you need to know the veterinarian's name, the neighbor's number. You need to exchange cell phone numbers. Okay. You need to be well prepared. You need to know. Uh, we were talking today about, you know, you have to be authorized if you're going to go to the vet Absolutely. veterinarian with someone else's pet. Right. They have to have authorization okay. when they arrive with an emergency right. uh, with a pet. And so you're going to have to pre-plan all of this. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then you need to have, um, uh, I always suggest a contact number of other people, the the neighbor and maybe a family member also. Okay. So you need to have more than more than one backup is good. Okay. Okay. And and also the importance of having an extra key to the house. Oh yes. Um, you can give your family member or a friend a key, but you need to have one in emergency just in case something happens to that key, so that somebody knows how to get into the house. I've oh. had a, a, a funny, a funny, or I'm not sure funny, okay. funny now, okay. uh, where uh, I had a person to leave me a key and they left the wrong key. Oh dear. <laughs> and that got pretty serious, but Ooh. I was lucky enough that he also had a garage door code. Okay. And uh, a cell phone number that I had and I called and he gave me that instead. He said, oh, I made you a key and then I left you the wrong key. So yes, you have to have backups. 
and uh, so you know this you have to cover everything yeah uh, another thing um, how do you what do you think about checking all of your pets when you leave in other words you don't want to leave an animal confined in a closet before you know you're rushing to leave to go on your vacation just like we do every night we do roll call okay you need to do roll call every time you visit okay uh, or every time a neighbor or a family member goes into the home okay to check on the pets they need to actually physically see every animal okay to know because if they say fluffy's going to probably be in the house and you'll never see her you still need to probably look for fluffy okay. to make mm -hmm. sure fluffy's okay and and if you can provide them with a list of possible hiding places that you know that yes. they like to our, our favorite places yes. <laughs> yeah and some of those uh you know i've looked all over a house before and found a a dog lounging in the leather chair in the den, <laughs> you know, back in a corner, almost snuggled under a blanket. And I just went all over the house several times. And I just, the last place I thought I should look for, for this particular kind of dog, uh -huh. you know. So. How about, how can we help our animals in the, in the play aspect? You know, they're there by themselves. Let's say they've got food and water and being checked on. But how can we keep them from being, quote, bored and lonely and because they'll miss us well some of their favorite toys could be uh, placed in different rooms okay and uh, then when the pet setter arrives then they too can take some of those favorite toys and they go in and out like today I did a visit with a pet uh -huh. and she always carries this ball out with her when okay. she goes outside and then she brings it back in and sets it down and okay. it's actually the ball that she carries outside it's not the toy okay that she plays with and then when she gets inside she has another toy okay. okay so they have certain things they like at certain places just like we do they okay. have particulars too like that so we have to pay attention to their favorite toys yes. right and some of them i had i've had a, a dog that wouldn't drink out of anything but his red bowl. <laughs> you have to know these things. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So th that communication with whoever yes. is coming into your house is really important. About details. Yes, yes. yes. so important. you have to know where to place these things. And like I fed a dog the other day and I fixed the food just like she told me. Uh, microwave it <laughs> and so-so oh, and she adds vegetables. And then I place it on the left side of the crate. Oh, wow. And when I get ready to open up the crate, I have to be prepared for the dog to barrel out. <laughs> so, you know, I know these things beforehand. Otherwise, I might have a sore ankle. <laughs> <laughs> oh. it, it's amazing what can, what can happen with these pets. And, and of course, you hopefully uh, will not have the situation where a, a pet will become destructive. And so having things that they're comfortable with is makes them much less likely to become destructive with your furniture or drapes or whatever it happens to be. And on so. one more note on that, on a soothing note, okay. uh, providing music or the television, but maybe not the noisy, excuse me guys, but ball games. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> it's really better to keep it on something more soothing or some music on is good. How about Animal Planet on the TV? Uh, that's okay. That's if it's okay slow. If it's, yeah. Uh, that's good. They like to have, and talk shows are good. Oh, okay. Uh, talk is really better for the pets. They like they like hearing somebody talk because we talk a lot. I have two foster cats, and I leave them in a separate area, and I leave the radio on for them uh, because I, I I should I'd like to spend more time with them, but it just doesn't seem to happen. So. And, and that's also a good suggestion for even during the day when you're at yes. work. Right. Leave it's, some noise on for them. That'll. And if you're gone, yes, and you know, a short trip or something, that's a good idea. And I had a client who uh, left Russian uh, when he he came. He always brought a tape for Russian music for his dog. Oh. <laughs> okay, <laughs> a, a cultured so, animal. Yes, because that's what he was used to. Oh, I see. Uh -huh. Well, I think it's probably time for us to take a, another break, and this time we have a. Uh, uh, forget me not right. tale that uh, has been a regular feature of our show and uh, uh, this one is about a, a greyhound named Frazier and oh some time ago we featured him as a happy, happy tale and now oh. we've kind of gone the full circle right. and he's he's a forget me not so I think you'll enjoy this uh, a little story very very much so give a listen. Frazier was a member of our family over six and a half years. He was trustworthy, loyal, friendly, kind, all the things you expect from a Boy Scout, but treasure and a dog. 
He had other human traits too. For instance, he did not like the noise in the house. When company came, Fraser would greet them at the door, then go to his pad in front of the fireplace. But as the room filled and things got noisy, he would leave for the solace of our bedroom. He was a fast learner. The first day we had him, he jumped onto the sofa. We told him no, and he never jumped onto furniture again. He came to the table once and nosed around while we were eating. A one-time simple and gentle no was all it took. He loved being around small children. Linda subs on occasion, and one day I took him to meet her class. Nine special kids surrounded him, and he loved every minute of this attention. Frazier, like most all greyhounds, was a great icebreaker. We met many new people and interesting people because of him. Three months after we lost him, we were off to the adoption agency in West Memphis to adopt again. Life without a gray is not a life we want to live. Welcome back. And we hope that you uh, enjoyed that tale about Frazier. It, uh, it always is tough when you lose a pet, but uh, Frazier obviously had a very, very happy life. And as many of you know, one of the features of the, or one of the things that we ask if you uh, have a pet on there, and we do a forget-me-not, is that you make a contribution and to either a local or, or national pet organization. And the Songers have made two contributions uh, to Project Hope, No Kill Humane Society in Metropolis. Uh, in fact, Linda even made a um, Afghan mm -hmm. that w went up for one of their fundraisers. So it, they did more than just a, right. a, a uh, money donation. And they uh, also made a contribution to Mid-South Greyhound Adoption, or Greyhound Rescue, I think it is, in Memphis, Tennessee, which is where they were able to get their Greyhound from. So uh, it, uh, uh, we thank you, Dan and Linda, for those contributions. And uh, if anybody else would like to, to have your uh, pet featured in a Forget-Me-Not segment, you can give us a call at 270-443-8330, uh, and we always have room to hear about pet stories, both happy tales and Forget-Me-Nots. So, Darlene? Well, before we continue with Home Alone, we were talking what about... What do you have now? Oh, I've got a toy, Greg. Oh, uh -oh. Okay, I brought this <laughs> one for home. Of course, I had to clean it up a little bit before mm -hmm. I brought it. This is a cat toy. Uh, the cat, uh, there's a little mouse in here, and the cat puts his paw in it and just plays and plays. And one of the nice things about it, if the cat is home alone, mm -hmm. they can play with the toy about you. In fact, I've seen our own Ginger Sue go into the, uh, what I call the cat room, and she'll sit there and she'll paw it. Now, she likes for me to come in and start it for her <laughs> so it spins a little faster. Mm -hmm. And you can get this toy at your local uh, pet store. So remember, both for your dog or your cat, yeah. that they need toys mm -hmm. uh, to play with uh, at home. And that, that's one that's been very successful with our uh, with our cats. Wicked hasn't paid a whole lot of attention to it. In fact, he's just sleeping here away today. He's, no, but yes. if you have a squeaky toy, <laughs> oh, yes. it, it's going to belong to Wicked. Yes. So all you have to do is leave him squeaky toys. And you can try to put them in the basket. They're going to come right out. They're going to be right in the living room. He uh, is. I've four. never seen a dog so protective of a squeaky toy as right. this one is. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's squeak along, Greg. Okay. We're talking about oh, Home Alone. Oh, that's a bad transition. <laughs> that's right. Uh, we now want to think about uh, what if I have uh, to be gone a longer period of time? What do I do? You know, it's not just a weekend. It's not just, you know, 24 hours. Help us out with our animals being home alone for a long period of time. Say a week or two or something like that. Right. Well, in that case, you're going to need to call in help. Now, mm -hmm. it could be a relative and some of the advantages would be a relative knows your house. Right. You trust them in your home. And they, use, and they know your pet, and you could get them to come in. Okay. And you could use a neighbor if you maybe exchange with them. They have pets, you have pets, right. and you know your neighbor. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. But if not, then you will need to call in a pet setter. Okay. And in any case, you'll need to check their credentials. Uh, how are they qualified? Uh, how long have they been doing? this particular uh, business or how much experience do they have with giving medications, how reliable are they. Uh, might even look out and see what kind of car they drove up in. Will it get back <laughs> on the next visit, you know, uh -huh. and uh, references, so on. But once you get that established, 
you'll need, again, like we said before, uh, you'll have to check with your veterinarian. You want to get everything all set up, authorized, uh, to make sure they know what to do in an emergency. Right. Uh, and you'll need uh, probably to uh, have extra food on hand. You'll need to make sure they know where everything is in your house. Okay. You know, because they're going to have to uh, empty the trash on a certain day. They're going to have to uh, scoop boxes for the cats. Right. They're going to be in charge of uh, feeding if it's microwave and vegetables or if it's <laughs> dog food. Where's the dog food? Is it out in the garage? Is it under a cabinet? Good um, point. So you're going to have to locate everything. In that case, I usually suggest that they meet uh, with the person. Uh huh and you go over everything with a fine tooth comb, as I say, and uh, you take good notes, and you leave good notes, and you leave lots of contact numbers. Mm -hmm. Now, this should not be done last minute. Okay. <laughs> Let's plan way ahead, because okay. you never know when you're going to get sick, a family member's going to be sick, uh, or you decide to take a vacation last minute. Okay. So it would be good for anyone who has pets who might just decide to go somewhere or doesn't know what's going to happen from day to day to start thinking now about who would take care of your baby right. in the event that you needed to not be there. And maybe you didn't plan to do anything but go shopping in Nashville, but someone else hit you yes. and you ended up staying in the hospital over there and you had to call. Who would you call? What would you do? Absolutely. So those mm -hmm. are thoughts oh. that might get you going and you might need to think about to what would you do if you needed to get started on uh, preparing for oh, your pet. Those are excellent suggestions, Sharon. Thank you. And uh, hopefully we would never have to face this latter situation that you just mentioned, but you, you just can't be too prepared. No, you should always have a backup plan. Yeah. I always have a plan A, B, and C, actually. <laughs> you know, that, that, that's excellent, you know plan A, B, and C, and hopefully mm -hmm. you never have to get to B and C, but you usually do. So. Yes, yes. So, so as our animals are home alone, we need to keep, give them a safe environment, uh, toys, and then plan ahead for their care, mm -hmm. right? Correct. Okay. And uh, Darlene, where does time go? I don't know, Greg. <laughs> it, just, it just flies by when you're having fun. <laughs> exactly. And, and Sharon, we would like to thank you so much today for coming and sharing time with us and your thoughts and suggestions. And if and You do have a website if people yeah. wanted more information. What is that website? Uh, yes, it is uh, www.pamperedpetpad.com. Dot com. Okay. Fantastic. And uh, do you have a telephone number that they could also yes, contact? Yes, it's 270-554-PETS. All right. 7387. 7387. Well, we just have to wrap up now today. Yes, we and, do. And uh, so this, we hope that our viewers have really gotten a lot out of this session. We know that you will. If you watch the show again, you'll uh, repeat, you'll even pick up more ideas. <laughs> so. so. Well, I'm Darlene. I'm Greg, and we would like to remind our viewers, as we always do, give your pet a little extra love today and, and every day. day. See you next time. Bye.